So before the next of our semi-finals, let's have a look at the Destination Dubai rankings for the women's singles. Of course, Li Xuere jumped up from number three to number one after her victory in Tokyo. And I'm pretty certain she's going to retain that number one ranking spot because she's up next. She's at least a semi-finalist. And I believe she will be number one still after the Indonesia Open. Here she is, the world number one, the defending champion, trying to get through to her third consecutive final here at the Indonesia Open. Of course, two years ago, she was beaten final Jindapon in the semi-final of a Super Series event for the very first time. And what a place to do it at one of the five premier events. And of course, if you were with us first thing this afternoon, you will have seen the first of the women's singles semi-finals. Well, I tell you, if this one is even half as good as the opening match with Arachinok Intanon, the world champion, coming through against the former world number one, Wang Shuqian, if it's half as good as that, we are in for a real treat. Well, after the toss of the coin, quick change of ends. Of course, the players can choose either which end they start the match or they can choose to serve or to receive. Well, Nishwe Ray, to me, looked very, very physically strong yesterday in her victory. But so did this young lady, Nicharon. Jindapon, 23 years of age, born in Phuket. Up three places in the world ranking this week, up to 13. She has been a little higher. She's been one place higher, in fact, at number 12. Making only her second appearance here at the Indonesia Open. Last year, she was beaten in the first round by Juliana Schenk. But, of course, Juliana Schenk went all the way to the final. Now, talk about a hard route through to the semi-final stage. Second round opponent, the 2011 winner, the former world champion and number three seed, Wang Yi Han, dropped the second game there, as indeed she'd done in her first match against Linda Wenny Fanatri of Indonesia. Yesterday, in the quarter-final against the left-handed uh, Bei Yung Ju, she dropped the opening game. She was 17-20 down. In the third game, she saved five match points on a run of five points herself, closed out the match. It really was quite remarkable. An absolute delight at the end of it for the Thailand player. So to her opponents, same age, 23 years of age, the world number one from Chongqing in Sichuan province, became world number one on the 20th of December, 2012 and has remained at number one ever since. As I say, she's trying to get through to her third consecutive final, the defending champion last year, and beaten finalist two years ago. The Olympic gold medalist from 2012 Olympic Games. Well, her record so far has been, well, probably as near to perfection as you can get. Five finals in five tournaments played. And her matches so far, as I was saying in the quarterfinal yesterday against the number eight seed, the three-time former champion, Sinan Awal. Well, it was a very close opening game, but I have to say her mental fortitude, as well as her physical conditioning, I think was absolutely superb. Well, this is the third meeting between these two players. The previous two have been won by the world number one, including that last occasion. That was the second round of the India Super Series event earlier this year. Three games, as you can see. And of course, so much of our attention in World Badminton, when we talk about the young Thailand players, we've talked about Rachanel Kintanon, of course, Untip Burana Prasatsuk, Busanan, who's still a junior. And we tend to forget about Jindapon, but let me tell you, she is a fine player. I've watched her on many an occasion. And I think she is hugely talented. Now both of our court officials from Indonesia. 
Nice to see all of our quarter officials wearing batik. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Nichaun Jinapon, Thailand. And on my left, Lee Shule, China. Lee Shule to sir. Love all. Play. So the defending champion and world number one, Lee Chong. Lee Shue Ray. One. Goodness me, I'm getting excited about a match coming up now. This promises to be a very good encounter as well. Three more matches to come, as Morton was saying. What a semi-finals day it's been so far. Mm, look at that. Well, if you didn't believe me, already the first two rallies have proved my point. Jin may not be as well known as other young Thailand women singles player, but she's a very, very exciting and very good player to watch. Oh, look at that cool coverage. Oh, my goodness me. Well, that should leave you in no doubt whatsoever. Three, the racket one. skills. Uh, we've talked about it endlessly with Arachan of Gintanon. Whatever the Thailand coaches are doing, they're doing it right because the racket skills of all these young players are quite phenomenal. One, three. Long. Oh, well, that's the last two rallies she's hit long. Ginger Pond, she'll have to remember about the drift. Flying slightly faster, going towards that far end of the court. Yeah, well, I've watched her in the past Four, twice two. take former world number one, Wang Shu Xian, to three games. Taking Wang Wei Han to three games as well. Not to mention Simon Awal and her opponent of today. In my opinion, we're just waiting for the first big win, as it were, against the top. Three, or one four. of the top four. There's Chen Jin, former world champion, now coaching the women's singles class. yesterday with Targo, Kanichi Targo. The players using a bit of height on the net shots. Five, rather than worrying four. too much about tumbling the shuttle. Just give it a bit of height and make sure you get it desperately close to the net. Very effective. Yeah, you said she's got to watch for the drift. Not managing to cope with it at the moment. Oh, it's a real pity there seems to be. After the excitement of the home players in the men's doubles, uh, just a bit of a, a lull with the fans, maybe needing to take a bit of a breather. But as we were saying Six, earlier four. in the day, earlier in the week, it's a very knowledgeable crowd here in Indonesia. They know good badminton when they see it. And even so, they haven't got home players to support in this one. We'll appreciate the good badminton. 
just wide. Seven, six. Short and yeah, simple. Well, she made it look simple. I think that shuffle was spinning Eight. quite ferociously. So, we'll have a look at that. It gets deflected off the top of the tape. Yeah, she had to be awfully careful. And indeed, she was. Well played, Lee Schwere. Not so on that occasion. Seven, eight. Nine, seven. We're certainly not seeing the length of rallies as we did with our opening semi-final this afternoon. Disappointment from Jindapont. She knows it was just wide. Not worth wasting her challenge on that. Yep. Good call, line judge. That's great skill again. Inside out. Hit shot. Lovely. Yeah, very, very positive on the defence. Most players would have really only considered blocking that, whip that cross court. Oh, good timing and technique to be able to get it so deep. Ten all. Yeah, good skill. So just one point in, in it at the mid-game interval. Look how she just slices across the feathers. Creating the deception, creating the angle. And just seven minutes played to the mid-game interval. As I was saying, five tournaments this year, five finals. For this young lady, eight tournaments, one previous one, semi final. The semi one, second one, semi final of the year, which the semi final at the German Grand Prix gold events. But this is a huge step forward in the career path of Jindapon. First one, ever. Ten. Super Series semi-final, let alone a premier Super Series event. That is forward, 11 all. Hmm. Well, what on earth was she trying to do there? That is yeah. Smile at her coach because she knows she's probably caught in two minds. And they don't really doing nothing. Oh, 
There's another one gone wide. Obviously wants tactically. Jindabon wants to try and pressurise the Olympic champion deep in her backhand corner. And maybe the sight of that heavy strapping on her left knee. Of course, when you jump to the round the head position, you've got to land on that left leg. Maybe there's a weakness. She can be slightly slow to recover. Oh, that one's landed in. Oh, wow. Perhaps got the feel of the range that she needs with the overhead shots, playing deep into court. I think it was at least three she hit long. That one was perfect. Oh, yeah, the shuttle got deflected. 15, 13. Lost her spatial awareness. This one from Lee Schwere, yeah, bounced off the top of the tape. If it hadn't have done that, it would have gone deep in court, and I think Jim Dupont would have been able to play it. Certainly yesterday, I thought this young lady played the pressure points so well against the three-time former champion, Simon Ewell. Oh, that's good. Lovely angle. The key was the movement back in court. Lovely. Well, obviously the fault was called that the shuttle wasn't up. She will regard that as a poor error. The lift from the Jinder Pond. It was not that deep in court. <laughs> oh. Chinese dragons still celebrating.
only two points adrift. Impresses me with Jindapon. Not only the skills, I think it's the vision. Seems to know where the gaps are. And it's just long, and she's back level. Yeah, indeed, it was. Good judgment. Goodness me, I thought she was going to play that. Decided to leave it, and it was a wise decision. Follows up so well after the smash, does Lee Shuere. Definitely found her range now, Ginger Pond. Shows the frustration. The young Thai player. Game point opportunity for the defending champion. But she was made to work hard for game number one, 21 19 in 17 minutes of play. Yeah, there were some lovely little touches and tactical awareness from Jindapon. Second game, love all. So the umpire calls for the start of the same game to get underway, and Nishwe Ray 
Well, number one, they made to work very hard for get that opening game. Yeah, it's a well-worked point, though. Signals so much about using all four one, corners of the court. You get your opponent out of position before you really try and go for the winner. And that was a perfect example from Lee Schwere. Yeah. Immediately apologises, Jim the Punt, for her good fortune. One, oh. Shuttle hitting the top of the net and just trickling over. Ah. Mm. And I do mean only just trickling over. Yeah, I think I'd like to see in the pond taking a little more initiative from that far side of the court. I think she can use her clears and lifts a little better from that side because you're not so afraid of hitting the shuttle out. Therefore, you can hit through on the punch clears and make it a little more deceptive. Yeah. It's a nice attacking shot. Two, three. Difference. Three, four. All of a sudden, is pushing the Olympic champion, pushing her to the back, making her move from side to side. I know that one was flat, just as effective. There's another one to the back, then bring her forward. Hmm, interesting. Four, three. straight points to go into the lead. Exactly as I thought she should. She's commanding the rallies. Five, and all of a sudden, when the Olympic champion is having to react to what her opponent's throwing at her, rather than dictating the pace, it's a very, very different scenario. Just wide. Five, oh. oh yes. What a magnificent smash, but the whole rally was set up. 
With the net shot. Oh, eight. Ooh. Umpire is saying, no, you can't towel down. Ooh, I think that's a bit harsh. Yeah, she was forced to play the short lift. From that moment, she was scampering back to her base position. Always looked in trouble. Oh, brilliant. My goodness me. What disguise. Kept in balance. Having been under pressure there. Holds it, holds it. Last minute flick. Absolutely terrific. Physical effort from the Shuere. Lunging forward. Look at that. That is nigh on perfect. Oh, great. Well, the problem for Jindapon there was that the net shot was so good, you couldn't possibly lift it, but her opponent was hovering, ready to pounce. Unless she played a perfect net shot in response, she was always going to lose the rally. And six straight points for the defending champion. Sideways drift as well, Five. Five. left and right as we look down on the court, and that one just taken a little pulled wide. That one's wide as well. Well, I'd have a challenge on that, I think. Eleven, hmm. five, in the wall. No challenges in this women's singles yet. I would have given that a challenge, I think. Definitely. Yeah, no challenge. The point remains with me for right. She's on one of eight straight points. She's three and five down to the mid game interval. That's impressive. Quad one, 20 seconds. Quad one, 20 seconds. Good. Tindapon trains with the National Federation, unlike both Rachanuk and Porn Tip. Very good club system in Thailand, so some of the players train with their clubs. Eleven, five. Play. Service over. Six, 
Ты лагод. Да, that's interesting. A little talking to to herself there. You swear right. Come on. Called long, there's a challenge here. Visually, challenge, best line fall out. Yeah, it was called out. She was very, very quick to challenge. So Hawkeye's going to make the decision. Yeah, good challenge it was in. Yeah, point to the Two challenges remaining. 13, 6, play. So she keeps her two challenges as her challenge was successful. Oh, that was a wicked bounce off the top Seven of the table. Four, 7, 13. Well, 10 of the last 11 points prior to that. Net court going to Lee Shwere. Well, from that 3-5 deficit, suddenly Li Shui-Rei has just upped her intensity, upped her focus. And in all honesty, seems to be romping away with it now. Well, isn't that the sign of a champion? One moment you think they're under pressure, the next moment they've really stamped their authority on the match. Spirited play by Jindapon. Way out of position to get the net shot. And final net court landing wide of the singles court. Oh, oh. my goodness me. Backhand cross court Seven smash eight. from the Olympic champion. Well, I'm telling you, you don't see that much in women's singles. Don't see it much in men's singles. Just 
just three points away from a third consecutive Indonesia Open final for this young lady. Good serve. Mm, well, if you're thinking of challenging, you're going to make a challenge. You've got to get on with it. You're going to have lost the match in two points time. Well, I think the umpire was right. She was a little bit slow to make the challenge, but I'm glad that she has. Might as well use the opportunity. As I say, if you don't challenge, you're two points away from defeat. I suspect it may be a forlorn hope, but it's worth a go. The stage of the match. Oh, maybe it was much closer than we thought, because Hawkeye is... Oh, no, it was him. Good call, One line judge. Remaining. 19, 10, play. Oh, yes. Got behind it well. She knew it was worth Ten. the risk. If her opponents had been able to reach that smash, of course, Lee Shui Ray would have been in huge trouble. And the fact was, she thought it was worth the risk that her opponent couldn't get it back. So match points are plenty for the defending champion. Only do the one though. 21-19, 21 10. A little over 36 minutes of play, and the defending champion waves to the fans. Well, she's had a remarkable but tournament, has Jinder Punt. This, I think, was just one match too many for her, given the fact that all three of her previous matches had gone the full distance. Saving those three match points in yesterday's quarterfinal. Just couldn't live with the pace of the number one seed, Lee Shuere, who's through to her third consecutive final. 21-19, 21-10 in 37 minutes. So just to recap on what's happened so far today, we started with women's singles. That was an absolute thriller. An hour and 23 minutes of badminton of the very, very highest quality. Then we had men's doubles and the Koreans fresh from victory in Japan. 
have continued their good run uh, against Fu Haifang and Zhang Nan. Then in the repeat of the World Championship final, a reverse of the result in Guangzhou last year. Disappointment for the home fans with the world champions Ahmad and Latsia losing in three games. What a victory for Jan Jorgensen. His first ever win over the world number two, Chen Long, in his seventh attempt, having lost the first six encounters with the Chinese player. Then Indonesia had something to shout about in the men's doubles, the defending champions coming through in three games against Kim and Kim of Korea. And as we've just seen in the women's singles, the defending champion, well, just too good. It was a good opening game, but then she really just ran away with it. Li Shui beaten finalist two years ago, winner last year, and tomorrow she'll contest her third consecutive final. So it's women's doubles up next, and it's the Olympic champions, Tiang Ching and Zhao Yunlei. And then our last match of the day, the world number one, Li Chong Wei of Malaysia. The five-time winner of this event up against Kenichi Targo of Japan. So the next of our semi-finals is women's doubles and let's have a quick look at the destination Dubai rankings and I can tell you that two of the big movers were the both the Korean pairs both reached the semi-final of the Japan Open and Jun Kyung Ung and Kim Han Ah went up six places from 14 their compatriots went up three places from nine to six and of course, at the top of the rankings, Matsutomo and Takahashi having won their maiden Super Series title after four runners-up positions. They have moved back to the top of those destination Dubai ranking lists. So the Chinese Olympic champions, number eight seeds here, wave to the fans as they come on to court. 